Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another recommendation video. So this one today I'm very excited to do. It is a forced proximity romance recommendations. So the fun thing about forced proximity is there are a ton of different ways that it can happen, right? It can be from an arranged marriage type situation, it could be road trip, it could be snowed in, it could be a lot of different things that cause the situation to be forced proximity. So the way that I'm going to do this today, because when I asked for recommendations, I did have people ask for me specifically for some um, snowed in recommendations, but I didn't have enough of just those to do just snowed in recommendations. So I'm going to start with snowed in recommendations and then I'm going to have a second half that is just more forced proximity. So let's go ahead and dive in with this and I will start with some snowed in options. So the first one is going to be In Bed with Mr. Wrong and this is by Katie Robert. This one is about a couple who they start out as a blind date together and it doesn't go so great but they can't stop talking about each other and they keep being drawn to each other. They both have kind of bad perceptions about each other, which is what gets their date off to a bad start, but then they are just like so into each other. Their chemistry is so intense that things keep happening between them, even though they're just like not into it. So their friends take it upon themselves to trick them out to a cabin location the night of a snowstorm and then they steal their vehicles and leave them trapped there for the weekend. So they end up kind of snowed in in this cabin. And it's really cute because their friends have hid like condoms all over the place. And so it's really funny because they're like, we're not going to sleep together. We're not going to sleep together. And they keep finding condoms like in the butter dish and in a box of cereals. And like in <laughs> just like in all these places, they have like... <laughs> a hundred condoms worth like spread through this cabin and it was really funny um this also has a soldier who is currently a soldier within it he is actually home just like between a tour or whatever so there's some military aspect going as well this is one of katie roberts like earlier works and i read it earlier this year it was just it was fun and quick and definitely a different style from Katie than you'll maybe see later on specifically even in the one I'm going to show you right now which was one of her like her Christmas in July release that she did which is one of her touch of Ted Boo novels gifting me to his best friend this is a menage situation between a married couple and his best friend and there is this is an MMF situation um, because the best friends the guy friends they do kind of have had feelings for each other but then you know one of them ended up married and it wasn't ever like a hiding who he was kind of thing because they were both bisexuals it's just that he fell in love completely with the woman first and so for Christmas this one year they always go away on a trip together and this year they decide to experiment with a few things and they do end up Kind of trapped in the cabin for the weekend together to test out if they want to be together and if there's more to this relationship than me see i these books are absolutely a fun time i love her touch of taboo series and i just i just love what katie robert can do and this one was super fun um then we will go a little bit more uh bonkers here with credence by penelope douglas this has a lot of crazy tropes going on um it definitely <laughs> is a bit of a darker like crazier book this one is about a girl who um her parents die slash there's a like de like double suicide situation that happens because one of them is dying and they want to die together and this girl ends up going to stay with her like adoptive uncle or uh so there's no like blood relationship or anything they were like stepbrothers maybe i don't know and he has two sons and she at one point or another ends up with each of them so there's an age gap as well as a menage situation as well as a she ends up with 
someone in the book but the thing is is they live in is it in Colorado yeah they live in the Colorado mountains which for like five months of the year they're all stuck up on the mountain and so a lot of the sexy times happen while we're trapped in the mountain so there's your dirty taboo version even dirtier than this one is taboo one then one I just read recently is called Left for Wild by Harlow Ray. This is a very interesting situation, um, kind of a complicated setup, but basically this ex-convict and his like, this woman works with a program who she works with people while they're in prison and then when they're transitioning out of prison to kind of help them acclimate and this couple they've the these two they've kind of already had like chemistry going on while he was in prison he was actually in prison for um like hacking reasons and as a punishment to him the people that he wronged kidnap him and this woman and bring them to the canadian wilderness and leave them there and they end up having to make a go of it together so it's a very interesting story, but I really, really liked it. Well, I wouldn't say really, really. I really, really liked it for the first half of the book. Sorry, I got a little excited. I ended up giving this book three and a half stars, so I didn't really, really like it. But the first half of the book, particularly the wilderness part of it, is really great. The part where it got rough for me was when we were no longer in the wilderness. So the Snowden part of the book, the part of it that I am suggesting this book for I really liked that's what I mean by the really really so we'll we'll say that a couple more here and we'll switch to a couple historicals that I had so the thing was with this question when someone asked me this they said I would like a forced proximity novel a Snowden romance bonus if it's a historical and I only have like two for this one particularly one um, because one of them's a novella and the one that's a novella is Once Upon a Winter's Eve by Tessa Dare. And this is a part of the Spindle Cove novella. So this is 1.5, I think is where this one fits. And this is actually self-published too. Um, but this one is about Violet, who um, there is this man who ends up on the shore of Spindle Cove. And if you know about Spindle Cove, Spindle Cove is this area that was mostly women and then this like uh, militia ends up staying in their town and that's kind of the start of a lot of the like conflict and romance situations for this series. Um, but this guy washes up on shore there and so all the militia guys are like, oh no, we need to uh, like figure out if this person's a spy or if they're here for some reasons, which is kind of silly because they're just like, um, there's nothing special here. Like, why would there be a spy? But the guys, you know, get a little overzealous. And there's a particular language that this person speaks and Violet understands it. I can't remember what language it is. Um, and so the militia want to use her to interpret. And she may or may not, spoiler alert, may actually know this person from her past. Um, so yeah, I can't say too much more. It's a novella. This one's really cute. Um, I really wish this book had been a full book, I'll tell you, because it was a very interesting plot for such a short story. But really, really liked it. I love all the Spindle Cove books. And then the only one that came directly to mind when I was asked for historical Snowden, and this is just, to me, I haven't read a lot of these yet, but the one that came to mind was Bewitching by Jill Barnett. Because this one, um, this is this is a um, fantasy slash like paranormal historical romance but it mostly is like a retelling of bewitched <laughs> but in a historical setting and this woman is a witch and she meets a duke and they end up kind of like forced to get married but also he really wants to marry her and she <laughs> but he doesn't want to admit that he would have like love at first sight feelings for this person and she can see that he's kind of a troubled sad duke and she wants to bring joy to him and it just so happens that her name is Joyous McQuarrie. Um, she is a Scottish witch. And she just has a good feeling that she's supposed to bring happiness to this duke. And 
they end up snowed in together when she tries to use her powers to teleport them somewhere. <laughs> It's not called teleporting in here, but that's what she's trying to do, and it doesn't work. And they end up stuck at this abandoned inn for, like, a couple nights together. And it's really cute because we see the Duke have to, like, start a fire, and, like, they make each other food, and it's just really adorable. So it's, like, the start of their marriage. They end up kind of stuck in this remote location together, and she has to decide if she wants to tell him she's a witch and see what he will believe about that, and... This book is adorable. It's adorable for so many reasons. I suggest this book. I've suggested it a lot recently since I read it. It's so cute. You really should give it a go. So those are all the ones that are specifically um, like Snowden books that I wanted to recommend. So now I'm going to go through some more. So I have a couple more historicals. I'll just start with those. The other is another Tessa Dare from the Spindle Cove. So I thought I would bring that one up. This is book two. So it takes place after that other one and this is a like road trip one this is about Minerva Hi Highwood who she is like um an archaeologist and she has found the bones of a dinosaur and she's trying to take them to um an event and she is a woman and the people at this event this association that she's a part of what's it called I don't know what it's called but they don't know that she is a woman. And so she needs a man to go with her. So she propositions Colin Sandhurst to come with her and be her escort and like pretend to be eloping with her so that she'll have a little bit of a cover to do this. And they end up, you know, of course, falling in love for real. So this is a road trip one. Um, this is really great. This is one of like, we have kind of a flippant, like rakish lord who has kind of lived his life the way that he wants to and he actually has some traumas that he's forced to face when he spends time with Minerva and I really liked it. This was a really fun book. Um, here I'll give you the step back action of this one, full page one. Um, it's Tessa Dare so she's gonna make you laugh, she's gonna make you cry, you're gonna have a great time. Ooh, I need a drink here. this drink by the way I'm drinking a Diet Coke with lime and raspberry so cheers to my girl Crystal who always inspires me with her awesome drinks then the other historical I want to suggest is the Duke buys a bride um, this is book two or three in the rogue files I think it's book three um, this is uh, really good so the Duke in this one is actually a Duke from the first book which is while the duke was sleeping and there's a duke who's actually in a coma for a while and this is that duke so he is trying to put his life back together after being in a coma and also trying to decide who he's going to be now because he wasn't a great person before this happened and through the events of him being in a coma and you know literally having a near-death experience um brought to him by his own bad choices He's trying to make some better choices and he goes on a little bit of a soul searching journey. And while he's on this journey, Marcus comes across a bride auction. So Alice Bell is actually auctioning herself off because her good friend is supposed to buy her from this, from a husband that she has. And this was actually a real thing you could do. It's funny that it was in this because I'd actually seen this custom in um on the show today i learned in history and it was something you could do in lieu of getting a divorce because it was hard to get a divorce but because you like owned the like title to your wife a lot of times you could auction your wife off to someone now this wasn't usually ever done as like an actual thing it was usually done the way it was done in this book where you already had a predetermined buyer ahead of time usually someone's lover or the person that they really wanted to be with and then the person would put you up for auction and then the person who you really wanted to be with would buy you well this day that that's going to happen her friend doesn't show up when he's supposed to purchase her and so there's this kind of creepy dude there 
who's like gonna buy her instead and so Marcus sees this happening doesn't know about this custom so he sweeps in thinking he's saving this girl from being auctioned into slavery which good for you Marcus like good for you for for doing that and he buys her and she's like dude WTF why did you just buy me if you <laughs> you know if it's not supposed to be with you so anyway weird setup but anyway they end up needing to go on a road trip because he's going to take her back to um, his estate and like find her a job or something like that. But of course, they end up falling in love together. So Sophie Jordan is a bit of a hit or miss for me. But one thing I will say for her, the Duke, the Rogue Files has really unique stories. And the books in the Rogue Files I've read, I have liked quite a lot. Um, it's some of her older works I've been reading I haven't been as huge a fan of, but the books in the Rogue Files have been very unique stories. Um, so then I want to share um, The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. Um, I don't have too much to say about this because it, the title kind of tells you, and if you haven't heard about this book yet, I don't know where you've been hiding on, on booktube for the last little bit, but this is about a girl who she moves across the country to live with her best friend, um, who she's hopelessly in love with, and her best friend rents out the other room in the house and ditches her to go on tour with his band, leaving her with a guy he found on Craigslist who's actually a porn star. So that's a thing. Um, there is other shenanigans that ensue, but she basically now has a roommate that number one she never knew and number two finds out is like the shit in the porn star industry. So that's, that's a thing that would be terrifying. Um, but Josh is really great. He's actually quite a cinnamon roll <laughs> and it was a fun book. Like sure people can say there's issues. I wish it had been steamier for what the setup of it was, but it was a great force proximity and it definitely has a lot of those like awkward moments you'd come across living with someone you never met before. And then I want to bring up Love Wrecked by Karina Halle. Halle, Hale, however we say this name. Um, this one was released this year, I believe Love Wrecked was, and this is a shipwrecked situation. Um, it's actually a pretty fun one nobody's in real danger so just know that this isn't a super depressing thing in fact my like biggest issue I had with the book is that there wasn't a lot of tension happening revolved around the shipwrecking part which was just odd but basically this this woman she goes to Australia or New Zealand for her sister's wedding and then the boat that her sister and brother-in-law are supposed to take ends up getting like overbooked so the best man actually owns his own boat and he agrees to drive the couple to their honeymoon destination in his boat and the sister makes her come along with them and then it's forced proximity on this boat and then it's forced proximity once the shipwreck happens so this is a extremely grumpy hero and a sunshine trope as well. Um, my biggest issue with this one is that the heroine, I had so, so feelings about her, but part of that is, is like her arc is that she is kind of self-centered as well as just like a lot of people think that she's self-centered, but she's maybe not as self-centered as they keep saying she is, right? It's one of those. Then there is A Favor for a Favor by Helena Hunting. This book was a delight. This is the first book in um, a new the, a trilogy by Helena. I can't remember what the name of the trilogy is, but I loved all three books. This one isn't quite a snowed in because it's not during like winter, but it does take place up in Alaska on Kodiak Island. And there is a hockey star who um, every year he takes a month and goes to Alaska with his brother to go fishing and this year his brother's wife is pregnant and she is having some health problems while she's pregnant so he finds out once he gets up there that his brother won't be coming meanwhile on the plane ride there he meets this girl who she is getting her like masters and she's studying um, some different things to do with nature up in the area and she gets this cabin which isn't very far from where he is. So they end up taking this journey to their homes together because 
they only are living like a mile apart where they are less than that I think because she's able to like walk to his place a long time but the place that she rents is a shit show like it's it's bad and it's not safe and they're like mice and it's gross and so he drops her off there and he's just like I can't leave you here like this place is this is horrible I can't leave you here and so they end up having a thing during the month that they're there and then this is actually a um secret baby surprise baby situation but but it's the kind that I like because he wasn't honest about what his name was um, he is you know didn't know if she knew about hockey and didn't want her to know and then they actually run into each other like 18 months later by total coincidence. So she had no way of reaching this guy. And so I really like those ones because I do love kids and romances and when babies are brought in and men who want their baby but don't know about it. I really love that. And I just really liked this story because... I loved the proximity when they were together and you just knew that something was coming because the first chapter of the book is them meeting each other and then it flashes back. And so you know that this is going to be a short lived thing, but it's just so sweet. Like they are so sweet together. It's so beautiful. And yeah, I, I loved, love that book so much. It's great. The last book that I want to recommend, which this one's going to maybe come out of left field, but when I was looking through Goodreads list about this trope, this one came up and I was like, you know what? This totally is a thing. And I really liked it. So I'm going to recommend um, Preston City, House of Earth and Blood. Because this one has to do with, this is a fantasy novel. This is an adult fantasy novel. This has all the fantasy creatures you could think of. It has a mystery that's going on. And Bryce Quinlan, she is like an art. Um, she works for an art dealer and her best friend was horribly murdered two years ago and now similar murders are happening and she gets assigned to this fallen angel who is supposed to kind of help her solve this crime um even though she's not a detective or anything um she kind of is put in this position where they want the information that she has and the insight that she has and so she's forced to work with this fallen angel hunt and it's amazing it's really sexy there is a lot of sexual tension and slow burn in this one. I know for a fact from what Sarah has said that there will be a big payoff to all that sexual tension that is laid in this book. And I love the banter and the relationship that gets built in this book. And so there was enough other amazing things happening in this book. Because this is a big book, guys. So I understand that... This doesn't really fit in with all of the other wrecks that I'm making, but I'm just trying to change it up a little bit. And if you're someone who loved, you know, the Akatar series, if you love those stuff, well, number one, you probably already read this, but maybe you've been putting it off because I read all those things and it still took me nine months to read this book. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I blew, I listened to this on audio and I like blew through it because it was so engaging and so good. And I just thought it was a really good example of a fourth proximity that like wasn't like any of the others. So there you go. There are some recommendations for forced proximity romances as well as some snowed in ones. Um, tell me what some of your favorite ones are. This was a fun and unique list to put together and I had a really good time. So let me know what you think of it. And yeah, as always, thank you to my channel members for people who support me. As always, if you want to check that out, check out the join button. You get early access to videos. You get to help suggest uh, topics to me and vote on which videos that I make, as well as there's a monthly hangout with just me. So make sure you check that out. If you're interested, the support would be greatly appreciated. Um, if you want to check out any of these books or other trope lists that I have, you can check out my Amazon storefront list, maybe to give your friends and family some ideas of what to get you for Christmas. Check that out. And I'll see you in my next video, peeps. Bye!